afternoon. The National Assembly for Wales is now in session. Before I call the First Minister, just two short statements. Um, it's been 15 years now since the Assembly met for the first time. And I, can I thank, on behalf of myself and the former presiding officer, all those members who have contributed constructively during that time to bring forward and scrutinise legislation and policy that has had a positive effect, uh, impact on the lives of the people of Wales. Jochen Bauer. And then it gives me great pleasure to announce that in accordance with Standing Order 26.75, the Education Wales Bill was given royal assent on the 12th of May. Well done. We now move to item one, which is questions to the First Minister. And the first question is Julie Morgan. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. What assessment has the minister, First Minister made of the progress girls are making in the Welsh education system? Uh, I am pleased to report that girls are making good progress in all areas of the Welsh education system, but of course there will be some areas such as, for example, STEM subjects, where there's more work to be done. Um, I thank the Minister for that response. Um, given that it would be wrong uh, to really ask any question about girls' education without expressing the abhorrence that I'm sure we all share at the abduction of the school yeah, yeah, yeah. girls in Nigeria, um, can I then go on to ask him what is being done to encourage um, more girls um, successfully studying STEM cells at school to go on and make it their careers after school? Can I uh, join with the member in expressing, I'm sure, what will be uh, the entire Assembly's abhorrence of what happened in northern Nigeria? Uh, what happened there was little more than a cover for what appears to be slave trading, yeah. uh, and I'm sure that all members uh, will want to express their disgust at what has happened and will uh, join those who want to see those girls return to their homes as soon as possible. Could I uh, deal with the issue of uh, girls' education in Wales? I mentioned STEM subjects. We are reviewing existing funding to Techniquest and Techniquest Glyndwr uh, to enhance support for girls' progression in STEM targeted uh, STEM subjects, rather at Key Stage Four. For example, Techniquest will be working with the Institute of Physics on the delivery of a pilot programme with Schools Challenge Cymru uh, to enhance girls' take up of A-level physics. And I know, of course, of the good work that's been done in this area as well by EESW. Susie Davis. Uh, uh, First Minister, a curriculum review of courses is, is in hand, but what consideration has your government already given uh, to ensuring that business and entrepreneurship forms part of the curriculum on vocational courses get commonly taken by girls, such as hair and beauty, for example? Um, and is your government already di discussing uh, the possibility of those curriculum changes with the uh, awarding bodies uh, that do award on different vocational qualifications? Well, of course, the review of the curriculum is wide-ranging, and we will consider how we can support those subjects that we know will provide the greatest skill levels for our young people as they go out into the world. Jocelyn Davis. Thank you, President <coughs> Officer. Uh, First Minister, uh, I hope that you were aware of the pioneering research uh, undertaken by Professor Emma Reynolds of Cardiff University with children uh, from 10 to 12 years of age in, in Wales, which found that um, sexism, pressure to conform to gender norms and even sexual harassment was in fact a feature of their everyday lives. Um, how will your government ensure that their plans to deliver healthy relationship education in schools will tackle the problem of sexism and harassment? And will you commit to looking closely at the university, uh, Cardiff University's um, uh, research findings? Yes, I entirely accept what the member has said, how important it is to ensure that healthy relationships are an important part of life in schools. And that is something that we seek to promote uh, in schools. Uh, and of course, uh, the member will be aware of the forthcoming uh, bill that will be presented to the Assembly, uh, which will give members the opportunity to see how this can be progressed further. Question to Antoinette Sandbach. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on rural broadband in North Wales? Uh, yes, Superfast Cymru is progressing well in the north and nearly 44,500 premises across the north can now access fast fibre broadband as a result of the Superfast Cymru programme. First Minister, access to reliable broadband uh, in rural Wales remains a problem with 22% of rural businesses saying connection to the internet is either poor or very poor. Um, as a result of the Wales Rural Observatory survey, which I'm sure you're aware of. I understand that ex Wavia have recently received a grant of 1.2 million from Finance Wales, and the idea is to improve broadband in North Wales, particularly in the Conway area. Given the likelihood of that overlapping with the super fast broadband Cymru programme, will you encourage um, ex Wavia and indeed BT to 
publish their programmes for rollout as soon as possible so that communities can know which company to go to for what? Well, of course, Superfast Cymru is the uh, government's uh, uh, programme. We have funded it, as has the UK government, with substantial funding, of course, from the European uh, Union. It is an ambitious programme, uh, which will allow 96% of households to have access to Superfast broadband by uh, 2016, and will deliver in many parts of Wales what the market cannot deliver, because, of course, there are insufficient people uh, in some parts of Wales in order for the market to be able to deliver services at a profit. It's an example of governments working together and intervening to make sure that those people across Wales have access, and businesses across Wales have access to a broadband speed that would be acceptable. Alan Fair Jones. Thank you. There is a great difference between BT's statements on the success of this pr programme and the experience of users on the ground. And one of the major frustrations that users have is an absence of information and a failure to access the correct information as to what's happened and when they're to receive a service. Now, as the government is funding this programme, can you ensure an improved provision of information to users so that they can be told when these changes are to take place? We would expect BT, of course, to ensure that they give people information about when the service will be coming to their area and possibly if you can look at the website to see how things are progressing on the rollout of Superfast Cymru. But, of course, it's a very highly ambitious programme in order to ensure that the majority of people in Wales have access to broadband. We now move to questions from the party leaders. And first this afternoon, the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew R.G. Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, last week you urged people to look at the outcomes of the Andrews report before making a judgment. That report has now been published and the failings at the Princess of Wales Hospital and Neath but Talbot Hospital are truly shocking. First Minister, you will be familiar with the evidence, but I will repeat it for the record. The hospital left my dad with a cloth and a bowl to wash himself in. I found dried excrement on his legs. My mum had no medication or food or water for days. There were patients calling out, one stuck in a bed with bed rails, and one lady said to me, I'm in hell. Do you think that these patients and others are due an unreserved apology from you as First Minister of Wales? Well, yes, they are owed an apology, and uh, the government uh, is, will give that apology. I give it now uh, on behalf of the government. I know that the Health Minister will do the same thing when he gives his statement, and I expect the local health board have by now also done that. There is no doubt that the contents of the report are shocking. Uh, we as a government will accept every part of that report and every recommendation. We expect the local health boards to implement those recommendations. We would expect all local health boards in Wales to take account of the report's recommendations in the way that they operate. Uh, I do note as well, of course, that it does say that this is not a mid-staffs situation, uh, and that is important to note, but I do not lessen the gravity of the report's contents, and we as a government will be moving forward with the recommendations and taking strong action. The statement that the Health Minister released this morning will be a cause of great concern to people. The last two Director Generals of the NHS here in Wales have been the former Chief Executives of Abatawi Bromogano Health Board. The statement which the Health Minister himself puts in, it puts in words that hospital managers either stood back from or did not understand their responsibilities in ensuring good quality patient care. Now, how on earth can a health board whose chief executive allowed that level of care and that level of supervision to uh, develop within its service be fit to be a director general of the Welsh NHS, a direct appointment of your government? Well, th there is nobody uh, who, is the, uh, who is in charge of the NHS in Wales, a director general, uh, who is from ABMU at this moment in time. Uh, I have to uh, say, of course, to the Leader of the uh, Opposition that he is right to point out the gravity of the report. I would remind him, of course, that it was this government who commissioned this report in the first place. Uh, it is not possible for governments to understand what happens on every ward and every hospital at all times, 
But it is correct that people should judge governments by the response that they give once failings are identified to them. And I believe that the statement that the Health Minister will give in the Chamber this afternoon will address all those issues to the satisfaction of the people of Wales. First Minister, the point I made to you was that the last two Director Generals of your health service that you are First Minister of were from this health board that has been identified as being in failure to deliver quality care and quality medical supervision on its wards and in its hospitals. We have time and time again called for a comprehensive Keogh-style inquiry across Wales. Now, I believe the evidence is stacking up. Clinicians believe that evidence is stacking up. Patients believe the evidence is stacking up. Your own appointments of professional people to run the health service here in Wales are questionable. How can we have any confidence that this isn't happening in other hospitals across Wales unless we have that clear, independent inquiry that can give us the answers that clinicians, patients and politicians require to have that confidence? Well, the Leader of the Opposition is going beyond what the inquiry and its report, uh, what the, the review and its report said. The report said that it did, did not wish to see resignations or sackings. It is quite clear about that. In fact, it says that the health board should remain in place in order to take through the recommendations that are there. I will not cherry pick parts of the report for my own purposes. I will, as will this government, accept all that is in that report. We accept all the recommendations and we will take action. Now, the Leader of the Opposition refers to a statement. Yes, a, a written statement has gone out, but the main statement will be this afternoon in this chamber before members when they have the opportunity to ask questions of the Health Minister. But I can say, without wishing to uh, prejudice what the Health Minister will say, once again, we will accept the recommendations of this review that we commissioned, and the review was commissioned following specific allegations made by an individual. The Health Minister listened, and a review was put in place as a result. The review is quite clear in terms of what needs to be done. There are recommendations there for Welsh Government. They will be taken forward. There are recommendations there for local health boards. They will be implemented. And we will, of course, ask to be judged on the response that we give to what is, I accept from his point of view, a report that has elements that are truly shocking. We now move to Leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. <coughs> Now, I note that the government will be making a statement uh, later into the events around Abertawe Bro Morganog Health Board, and I also note the publication of one of the independent reviews this morning. But ahead of that, can the First Minister explain why he believes that at least 11 concurrent investigations are preferable to an overarching one? do not know of 11 concurrent investigations, particularly of this sort. I think it's right that where uh, certain issues are raised, that there is a review of this sort. And indeed, the report itself says that there is no requirement for a public inquiry. There are a number of reviews going on at, at the same time, and there is little doubt, Llywydd, that public confidence must be restored here now. And one of the recommendations of the Trusted to Care Review is for the Welsh Government to institute a further independent review of provision for older people. Is it not in the best interests of patients and indeed of public confidence to have a, a broader process? No, we will follow the recommendations in the report, uh, as I've already indicated. Uh, the report itself, again, makes it clear that this is not a mid-staffs situation. It makes it clear this is not a case for a further public inquiry. It also says this is not a case where, if I can put it this way, heads should roll. It does make it very clear that there are actions that must be taken, and those actions will be taken. So, with, I specifically raised the issue of a more wide-ranging process, because none of the reviews so far have considered what legislative avenues could be explored. Now, there have been allegations of tampering with medical records in this case. Will the First Minister therefore support legislation proposed by my colleague Jocelyn Davis for greater medical accountability and the safeguarding of patient records? Jocelyn Davis's proposals come from specific recommendations in the Mid-Staffs inquiry. Will the First Minister agree to at least explore this possibility? Yes. Uh, I think it's important, of course, that people have faith 
that medical records are accurate and that they are uh, open. And of course, we are more than happy to discuss uh, how that might be done with the party uh, opposite. Uh, I do emphasise, of course, uh, that as far as this uh, instance is concerned, we will, of course, be taking forward all the recommendations that are included in that uh, report. Although the leader of Plaid Cymru will appreciate, I can't comment specifically on issues that are in the hands of the police. We now move to the leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, let me start with a quote. We heard evidence of food remaining uneaten on trays with no assistance on offer, or of patients struggling to feed themselves or being helped by other people's visitors. That isn't a quote from this morning's damning report into Abatara Bromoganog. It is, in fact, a quote from the Older Persons Commissioner's Dignified Care Report published three years ago. At that time, your government promised improvements and action. But the report this morning highlights similar, very similar shocking failings in the care of vulnerable older people. Can I ask you how many more reports will have to be produced for your government before we see concrete action that stops this shocking failing of older people in hospital? Well, I, I, I will not argue with what the leader of the Liberal Democrats has highlighted, uh, because I believe it's important when a report like this is produced, uh, there is no attempt to uh, whitewash uh, or indeed uh, soft soap when it comes to the issues themselves. The review itself, although conducted into events at ABMU, are relevant across the whole of Wales. I would expect all LHBs in Wales to conduct themselves according to the recommendations in the report. The Health Minister will, in the course of his statement this afternoon, give uh, members details of how the recommendations will be followed up in order to make sure <coughs> excuse me, that they are implemented. With all due respect, First Minister, your government, the previous Health Minister, made exactly <coughs> the same commitments following the publication of the Dignified Care Report. But the Trusted Care Report published today highlights how there is a disconnect between frontline staff and managers and that there is a confusion over leadership responsibilities and accountabilities. Now, just last year, the Wales Audit Report produced very similar findings about Betsy Cadwallader, which stated that the Health Board is not adequately addressing the gap between the ward and the board, and that there was a disconnect between clinical functions and management at hospital sites. When will your government ensure that the lessons learnt at one Health Board will be learnt across the entire Welsh NHS? That, that is crucial, although I, I would uh, urge members not to think that this is true of all LHBs. There have been <coughs> issues identified today in ABMU, and they are serious issues. There have been other issues that have been identified in one other LHB in Wales, and changes have been effected since then. I emphasise once again that even though this review is into events that occurred at two hospitals within ABMU, it wouldn't be correct to say that the problems were endemic throughout both hospitals, but they were serious in some areas, some wards of those hospitals. And I would expect all LHBs in Wales to follow the recommendations that are in the report, and they will, of course, be judged according to how they have followed those recommendations. I'm very interested, presiding officer, in the First Minister's <coughs> comments on how LHBs will be judged. Let's be clear, the only people held to account so far for the failings at Abertire Bromoganog are frontline nursing staff working in a system that, if you read the report, practically set them up to fail. Now, I'm not here to defend individual poor nursing practice, but I am here to hold your government to account. When are you going to ensure that all local health boards across Wales have the right staff with the right training in the night right numbers on the right shifts to stop these things from happening? These are matters that the local health boards must uh, ensure happen in the future. She asked the question, it's a fair question, how can members be sure uh, that this will happen in the future? Members will, will know that the health minister is considering his response to the health uh, committee in terms, for example, of health inspectorate Wales and how that can be strengthened in the future, particularly with regards to inspections. I take the point very much that uh, it is not sufficient for uh, hospitals to take on board these recommendations and implement them, but only in the short term. And we understand that there is a need to ensure that the inspection process 
is sufficiently robust to ensure that the recommendations contained in this report are implemented in the, in the short term but continue for the future. We now move back to questions on the paper and question three is Elinid Parrott. Uh, Josh Lewis, will the First Minister provide an update on the progress made by Enterprise Zones in South Wales? Yes, they're making some progress. I announced yesterday that uh, just over 5,000 jobs have been supported across our Enterprise Zones and we will report against other indicators later this month. Uh, thank you, First Minister. The Welsh Government's longitudinal survey states that only 32% of the businesses in the central Cardiff enterprise zone knew they were in an enterprise zone, um, but that a forthcoming marketing campaign would be uh, launched to address that. When will that campaign begin and what objectives will be set for it? Well, the objective will be, of course, to ensure that uh, more is done in order to ensure that people are aware of the enterprise zone in terms of the advantages that it brings. Uh, but I believe that will happen as we see more businesses taking an interest in and moving into the enterprise zone. And that is something uh, that is happening at, uh, at the moment. We have to ensure, of course, as a government that there is suitable office accommodation to attract uh, key uh, tenants. That is uh, crucial. And I believe that uh, as we have seen uh, the announcements begin now within the Cardiff Central Enterprise Zone, that awareness will grow and the success of the zone will grow further. William Graham. Thank you, Presiding Officer. <coughs> I'm sure, First Minister, you'll uh, agree with me that we welcome the news that Tenneco Walker are to create 200 jobs in Merthyr, just along the A465 from the Ever Vale Enterprise Zone. And that particular enterprise zone is being promoted, potential hub for motor industry manufacturing and research. Could you indicate what progress is made towards making that a, a, a reality? Well, some good work has been done, of course, at uh, the Enterprise Zone, the Heads of the Valleys uh, Enterprise uh, Zone. Uh, for example, uh, money has been invested at the Rida Blau uh, site. The member will know that work on the uh, Heads of the Valleys Road is underway. And, of course, we are examining the potential for extending the railway line uh, from uh, Ebervale Parkway into Ebervale uh, itself, which will certainly help in terms of attracting uh, investment. But I certainly very much welcome the decision by Tenneco Walker to uh, build a new uh, manufacturing facility at Dowlais uh, Top, 220 jobs, and I'm sure that all members will welcome that. Bethan Jenkins. Um, First Minister, according to your report of last month, only one in five businesses in the Enterprise Zones were aware of favourable loans available from Finance Wales and also about the broadband rollout across Wales. Now, in light of that, what have you done to respond to what's said in that report? Because clearly we want businesses to be aware of these opportunities. Well, that, of course, appears in the fact that so many posts have been created or have been protected in the zones themselves, as I said, in excess of 5,000, and that's something to be welcomed. Or Sandy Mewies. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, how is the Welsh Government helping people with disabilities access training in order to gain employment? Well, supporting people to find sustainable employment remains, of course, a key priority for us as a government. Uh, we have programme for government commitments, extending apprenticeships, providing training opportunities uh, uh, such as Jobs Growth uh, Wales and of course uh, we have provided the employment support grant for those affected by the REM plug closures. Uh, thank you for that. Evidence uh, rather sadly shows that many employers in Wales still have a negative attitude towards employing people suffering sight loss. In fact, according to research by RNIB Cymru, blind and partially sighted people are more likely to be unemployed than people with other disabilities. Last, last week I hosted an, an, an event to launch RNIB's successful Future Insight project at which uh, uh, my colleague Ken Skates uh, uh, spoke very eloquently. It's aimed at helping young people with sight problems gain training and help them into employment. First Minister, what further action is the Welsh Government taking to encourage and raise awareness amongst employers that sight loss need not be a barrier? to employment? Well, indeed. Uh, I, I refer the member, of course, to the eye health care delivery plan that was launched in September of uh, last year. Uh, and that does uh, look at how uh, local government and health boards working with the third sector can uh, plan, coordinate and deliver services for people living within their local communities. Uh, to my mind, that also means that they need to ensure uh, that awareness is raised amongst potential employers of the potential that exists amongst those who are blind or partially sighted in terms of what they can offer them as uh, employees. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, ensured via the, um, uh, the ESG that there is support there for those who were previously uh, REMPLOY workers, uh, and I certainly would join uh, the members' uh, 
I, I would agree with what the member has said in terms of ensuring uh, that local government, local health boards and indeed employers work together to ensure that those who are blind or partially sighted uh, are not uh, put at a disadvantage in the uh, employment market. Jonathan Saunders. Thank you, President Officer. The First Minister, despite the fact that there is supposed to be a disability employment advisor in every job centre across Wales, I can advise that it's very difficult actually for, for the disabled actually finding training support, either entering work for the first time or returning to work. Over the border in England, there are nine residential training providers with staff ably trained and knowledgeable on disability issues. However, this facility is simply not available in Wales. Why is that not the case? And what are you doing as the First Minister to ensure that anybody wanting to return to work or indeed start work for the first time, disabled or otherwise, receive the appropriate support from the Welsh Government? I wasn't aware that the DWP was the Welsh Government Department. Uh, as far as I can re recall, and most members, uh, it is run by your party and your government in, in London. And if there are those in Wales who are put at a disadvantage compared to those in England, it is a matter that I'd urge the member to take up with her colleagues at Westminster. Lindsay Whittle. With, um, First Minister, what liaison is there between the Welsh Government and trade unions to ensure that public sector organisations in Wales are positively encouraging disabled people to apply for jobs, please? Well, there's a great deal of uh, engagement between ourselves and uh, trades unions, as the member might, uh, might imagine. Uh, and we work on uh, a number of projects in order to uh, help with, uh, with training and with, uh, with employment. Uh, one example, of course, of where that has happened is the ESG. Uh, that is support that has been given to workers in Wales. It was not available, sadly, to disabled workers in England. Uh, and that is something I know that many people in Wales have benefited from. Question five, Darren Miller. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister outline the action he is taking to address poor performance in the Welsh NHS? Well, uh, well, performance in the Welsh NHS is improving. There will be occasions when that is not the case, as we have already uh, discussed in this chamber this afternoon, uh, where performance is not adequate uh, or not satisfactory, then we will take action to remedy the situation. First Minister, one aspect of poor performance that concerns have been raised about, of course, is uh, mortality rates in hospitals. And, of course, there were concerns raised by Sir Bruce Keogh on uh, this matter in emails which were sent between the Welsh Government uh, and him. Why did you try to cover those up? Uh, I can assure members that ministers had no role uh, in terms of determining whether this information should be released or not because uh, ministers never saw the paperwork. Uh, what happened was the Department of Health released all the information before any decision could be taken by any minister as to whether any exemption should be applied. But I, I have to inform uh, members that uh, the Daily Mail rang us about this on Friday, asked us why we didn't publish mortality risks. When we told them that we did, and gave them the link to the website where it was published. They refused to take any more calls and wrote the story anyway. Uh, and uh, sure enough, the uh, member fell into the trap of being quoted as part of that story, there, despite the fact that the story was entirely fallacious and based on very weak grounds. Mick Antonyuk. First Minister, I, I welcome the fact that uh, uh, health boards, including Contelf Health, Contelf health Board, will now have the fan financial flexibility to plan over a three-year period. Could you outline what, the, what you see as the benefits to the South Central Alliance and for people in my constituency of that change? Yes, before I answer the, uh, the member's question, just to return to the original question, I should add, of course, that uh, if I remember rightly, uh, the information uh, that the uh, member uh, earlier referred to was released as a result of a freedom of information request to the Department of Health, which was answered in two hours. Mm. And that gives you some idea of the level of collusion that took place between the Department of Health, mm. the wholly politicised government department oh. now, uh, and indeed some sections of the media. If I could turn to what the uh, member for pont de has asked me, I believe it's absolutely right that health boards have greater flexibility. The fact that they will be able to plan their finances over three years, as do many organisations in the public and third sector, will help them to budget and will help them to deliver better services for the people that they serve. Lynn Jones. First Minister, in your earlier responses this afternoon, you've talked about the consideration of strengthening the Health Inspectorate. And at the moment, the Health Inspectorate is a subsection of your local government directorate in your government in order to increase augment the confidence of the people of Wales in the process of inspecting the health service in Wales. Is it high time that you as a government also created a totally independent inspectorate? Well, I've seen the committee's response 
to that issue, I should remind members, of course, that it's not the Welsh government that created the situation that we currently have. It was the Westminster government that did that. So it wasn't the Welsh government's choice that brought about this current structure. And it's very important that the future structure is one that gives confidence to the people of Wales on the inspectorate system. Black. Thank you, Representative. So, First Minister, one of the um, key passages in the Andrews report is that she says that the review team does have a concern that the board over a number of years appears to have been driven mainly by a model of short-term financial planning required by the operational and planning framework processes in place across the NHS in Wales. And she says the question should be asked about whether such a relentless focus on financial delivery year on year prompted by the national system is distracting NHS boards from a proper focus on quality and patient safety. You will know that is a similar concern which is also raised in the Francis report on, on mid staff. Can I ask you how your government is addressing that particular concern? Well, well that's why, of course, uh, we are moving from a one-year um, budget uh, financial year to a three-year uh, financial year in order to ensure there is more flexibility uh, and to ensure that local health boards are able to plan more long-term, uh, which is precisely why, of course, we wish to, uh, to move to that three-year planning framework. Question six, Green Price. Thank you, Claude. What action is the Welsh Government taking to improve education in this line? Well, we are committed to improving education across Wales. We've put in place a range of measures to raise standards, and those measures will benefit learners throughout Wales, including those in this line. Thank you very much for that answer. I very much welcome the challenge come refunding, which is helping schools like Blackwood Comprehensive School in my constituency. Sensible reforms is built on continuous improvements. What would you say to those who would like to see a radical and unimprove, unimproven changes to education policy in Wales, such as free schools? Well, I mean, we can see what's happening with free schools in England. We can see yep. that the majority of schools have had money siphoned from them in order to pay for a very small number of schools that have been unsuccessful. And we saw, I mean, you don't have to take my word uh, for it. You can see the very public battle taking place between the Tories and the Lib Dems who are in conflict over free schools. They have not worked well. And we know that the majority of children have had funding taken from them in order to pay for a small minority, which sums up, of course, the philosophy of the Conservative Party. And sadly, at this moment in time, although I give them credit for their recent conversion, the Liberal Democrats. I can say that as far as Schools Challenge Cymru is concerned, uh, this will help to raise standards in many schools across Wales. Blackwood Comprehensive is one, of course, in the members' own uh, constituency. And that package of support will ensure that we see greater consistency in terms of educational standard delivery across Wales. Mohamed Ashgar. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. First, Mr. The Kafiri Council plan to improve education in Isloin include the closure of Oakdale and Pontefract comprehensive schools and the building of new school in Oakdale. In their response to the consultation, Aston expressed their concern that the council did not make specific reference in its proposal as how it will ensure that disruption in learners is kept to a minimum. First, Mr. What assistance can the, can the Welsh Government provide to Kerfilly Council to ensure disruption to pupil education is minimised in this period of transition? Well, I can't, of course, comment on specific examples because of the role of Welsh ministers, but it's incumbent on any local authority to ensure <coughs> that disruption is minimised when a new school is built. And, uh, of course, this is a particular issue in Wales because we are building new schools unlike his party in England. <laughs> Question seven, Paul Davis. Uh, deal Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on the reconfiguration of health services in West Wales? The changes now being implemented by How Well Our University Health Board will ensure that services are safe, sustainable and meet national standards. This will lead to improved levels of care and better outcomes for patients. First Minister, of course, models have now been confirmed by the Hawelda University Health Board, which will mean that services will disappear from Pembrokeshire. You may have seen over the weekend the A40 had been closed as a result of a tragic accident and that the Clethi Bridge was closed at the same time because of high winds. And this meant that Pembrokeshire had been cut off from the rest of West Wales. Now, given these serious circumstances and similar circumstances, can the First Minister tell us what infrastructure investments the Welsh Government is looking at, bearing in mind that people's lives will be put at risk as they try and access Glengwilly Hospital? Well, it is exceptionally important, of course, to ensure that all changes are safe. We understand that and we are confident that that is the case. And may I also say to the member, 
that it has to be said that the position as regards 24-hour care, emergency care in the hospital, will be retained. I know that there is concern amongst the people of Pembrokeshire and that might be lessened. Um, they thought that the 24-hour cover would be lessened, but that is not the case. That is not what the board intends doing. And, of course, we must ensure where changes take place, that the changes take place in a way which is beneficial to the people of Pembrokeshire. And that is exactly what the minister's officials and the minister himself is doing at present. We all understand that any changes have to be introduced in a way which is safe in order to ensure that people support those changes. Rebecca Evans. <coughs> Excuse me, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, with regards to minor injury provision in Tenby, I was given assurances that there'd be a full assessment of the pilot scheme before any of the permanent changes came into place. Would you be able to provide me with an update on that assessment and assurances that the service is now fit for purpose as we enter the tourist season? Uh, I understand that the Health Board intends to commission a summer service in Tenby again this year, and it is currently working up a detailed service specification with WAST and with others. Roger Glyn Thomas. First Minister, this morning I received a report from the Hawelda Community Health Council saying that they hadn't been notified beforehand of the A&E units and there are quite practical recommendations in this report, eight in all because there's mention in this report that there are people sitting in these departments waiting to hear where the sessions for people with impaired sight uh, will be held, that is, people in the ophthalmic departments, and that that information isn't available, that basic information should be available in every A&E unit throughout Wales. I'll ask the Health Minister to consider that report and to write to the member with a response. Uh, <coughs> uh, First Minister, can you confirm when the service changes at Withybush and Glangwilly will come into effect? The consultation with staff runs until next Thursday and local media reports suggest that the changes will be happening on the 1st of August and I'd like to know if that's correct. But more critically, can you confirm that all transitional arrangements will be in place before any of the service changes come into effect? I can confirm that the intention is to put the uh, arrangements in place by August. I can say that officials have met recently with the Health Board and are satisfied that all transitional arrangements necessary to give effect to these changes are or will be in place by August. It's important, of course, to give that assurance to people in the local area. Question 8, Ellen Jones. <coughs> Pagam what steps can the Welsh Government take to support small businesses? Well, of course, we are committed to the creation of jobs and growth, and it is key that small and medium enterprises in Wales have access to the best support. For example, of course, recently we announced a new fund of £7.5 million pounds, uh, for businesses in the field of technology. First Minister, I held a meeting with businesses and shop owners in the market town of Lampeter just last week to promote trade in the town and it's a town that's faced the extremes of the financial difficulties that have hit the whole country and a number of businesses in that town were greatly interested in using social media to promote business out with the town but a problem for a town such as Lampeter and it's true of some other towns too is that the 3G phone sig signal is deficient in a town such as Lampeter, never mind the 4G signal. Now, the question for you as a government is what steps you can take to ensure that even relatively large towns such as Lamp Lampeter have the minimum of a 3G signal and then can move on to 4G also? Well, this is a commercial issue for the phone companies, but it's true to say, of course, that a number of areas in Wales don't have the level of coverage that we would expect as regards 3G, 3G and even 4G too. But it is important to emphasise uh, super fast Cymru and the fact that there will be access to super, the, the uh, super fast broadband and we would expect them to notify areas about the social media. 
Thank you, President Officer. Uh, First Minister, small businesses are, of course, created in the main by entrepreneurs. And as you will know, the Enterprise and Business Committee's inquiry report into youth entrepreneurship, published in November 2013, have a copy here, contained a number of recommendations for better supporting small business startup and entrepreneurship uh, in Wales. Uh, some of those recommendations included a better incubation uh, for small business startups and also that you work more closely with organisations such as the Prince's Trust. Can you tell us one way uh, that your government's support for young entrepreneurs has improved since the publication of this report in November of last year? Well, I would disagree with the member when he, has, he says that small businesses are started up by entrepreneurs. All businesses, to my mind, are started up by entrepreneurs. Uh, but nevertheless, he asked the question, what has been done? We have the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme that has been successful in ensuring that young people are able to enter business. We have the extension of the Small Business Rate Relief until March of next year. Uh, where it goes from there depends, of course, on funding from the UK government. And, of course, we have the Wales Retail Relief Scheme and the Open for Business Scheme. Taken together, uh, this funding, uh, of course, provides the uh, ability for young people, including the fund I refer to, the Technology Startup Fund, to have access to help uh, that is uh, help that will enable them to take their ideas forward uh, to set up new businesses. And so there are a number of funds that have been set up, since, or at least one fund that's been set up since the... Uh, since that report was published, and of course it adds to the support that is already in place for young entrepreneurs. Question nine, Leighton Andrews. Will the First Minister make a statement on Jobs Growth Wales? Well, Jobs Growth Wales is exceeding targets, and almost 10,000 young people are benefiting from the opportunities created to date. That, of course, has helped them to avoid long spells of unemployment. Youth unemployment continues to fall faster in Wales and other, other parts of the UK, and that programme has played a part in that. And that is true whichever measure you use in terms of the ONS. Uh, as the First Minister knows, Jobs Growth Wales reached its second anniversary last, year, last month, and it's not just the uh, numbers getting the job opportunities that's very pleasing, it's also the numbers progressing into sustainable employment uh, from Jobs Growth Wales. Does he agree with me that it is now time that the Conservative Liberal Democrat Coalition in London apologises on the fourth anniversary of abolishing the Future Jobs Fund? Mm, well, I mean, it's, uh, it, is a, it is a great shame that uh, young people in England are not able to benefit from the sort of scheme that we have in Wales through Jobs Growth Wales. Uh, probably the most successful scheme of its kind in Europe, a scheme that was brought in not as a replacement for the Future Jobs Fund, but because the Future Jobs Fund was slashed by the UK government, which shows how little concern they have for young people. Fortunately, in Wales, we know how to give our young people opportunities, whether it's through Jobs Growth Wales, whether it's through ensuring they don't pay £18,000 more to go to university than in England. It's a great shame the UK government doesn't have the same regard for the future of this country. I only have Mark Isherwood down as a Conservative uh, question this afternoon, not Andrew Archie Davis. Mark Isherwood. Uh, oh, you're, oh, thank you very much indeed for calling me. Um, yes, of course, the, the work programme took that up and we're expecting very encouraging figures to be published shortly for the last year, but specifically the jobs growth uh, at Wales. Why does the destination data published by the Welsh Government include recycled jobs, such as what, as one job opportunity could result in both an early lever and a completed six-month opportunity uh, showing within, I understand, the 10,000 or almost 10,000 figure uh, you refer to? What's important is that there is uh, a, a job available for a young person at the end of Jobs Growth Wales. There will be some who will not stay, there will be some who will go on to uh, further or higher education, but we know that the vast majority get the opportunity of a job and are staying in that job. And they are opportunities that would not exist if it wasn't for Jobs Growth Wales. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. This government, of course, seems to see Jobs Growth Wales as the panacea which resolves the problem of unemployment and youth unemployment particularly, but the statistics don't support that, of course. Would the First Minister agree with me that this scheme, although it is a contribution, an important contribution towards tackling youth unemployment, that it doesn't support those who are further removed from the labour market, those without any qualifications at all? Well, I don't believe that the member is right in saying that <coughs> the the uh, not the growth of jobs is the way of uh, resolving unemployment, but it's true to say that there is 
some, those who are neat in the needs, not in education or in training, they we have to look after ensure that they are looked after as well but may I say that there are fewer young people in that category now than was true a couple of years ago and of course we would ensure that we work through communities such as Communities First in order to help them through schemes such as that but it is surprising to me that the member for Ernest Morn is unable to welcome this that there are more than 9,000 young people have found jobs through this Jobs Growth Wales scheme and it's a great shame that you can't say that that is a success even those who call themselves like Cymru. Uh, Diolch Lewis, uh, First Minister, what percentage of the young people taking up a Jobs Growth Wales placement have been unemployed for more than 12 months at the start of their placement? Well, she will know, of course, that uh, they have to be unemployed for more than six months in order to take up a, a placement. Uh, and she will know, of course, the criteria that exist in order for uh, those uh, who uh, enter this, the uh, scheme to be able to do so. But we have to remember uh, that this is a scheme that had its origins in the fact that we talked to businesses. This was not a scheme that was set up by government in a vacuum. When I spoke to SMEs, they were saying to me and to others, including uh, ministers, that the problem they had was they wished to take on more people, but found they didn't have the time or the resources to train them, which is why Jobs Growth Wales was introduced. Working with SMEs, we have been able to provide the expertise that they need, together, of course, with the expertise and experience that young people need. And I've been to businesses across the whole of Wales who said the same thing to me. They are now employing people they would not otherwise have employed, and they are young people now earning a living in a way that wouldn't have been possible for them three or four years ago. Thank you, First Minister. We now move to item two.